look at you. You finally got that monstera you've been wanting. But now what? Congratulations, you're now the brand new owner of a Monstera Deliciosa. You've seen them all over Instagram. You want to participate in hashtag Monstera Monday. You finally have your plant. But do you know how to take care of it? In today's video, we're going to go over all the things you need to know to make sure that you grow a big, successful Monstera in your very own home. Keep watching. If you like my video, be sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. In today's video, we're going to cover soil, water, light, propagation methods, and other interesting facts that you should know about the Monstera when you bring it into your home. It's a very easy care plant, easy to take care of. It's really no fuss. It's a great addition to your collection. If you're nervous, don't be. It's a very easy plant to grow. First, I'd like to show you my Monstera family. So this I'll start with this little guy. He's in about a six inch pot. I've had him approximately six or seven months. I received him through Etsy at Gardens Goods Direct. He came really soaking wet when I received him. He also doesn't sit in the brightest of locations within my home, which I think is why his growth is delayed a little bit more than some of my other Monsteras. Let me show you the other guys I have. guy, if you can see him, he sits upstairs in my bedroom. Hey, see how big he is? He was a rescue the kids convinced me to get from Lowe's. Gotta make room. And then there's this guy. <laughs> Let me take the camera up. He's my big brother. He sits in my west facing window. He's huge. And if you can see, see if I can find the leaf. Can you see that there? I was so excited when that leaf came out. Look at the fenestrations in the middle. Isn't that awesome? But wait, we have more. Because having three Monstera plants isn't enough, we have to make sure that we propagate more. And you can see here, we are well on our way. These I'm actually propagating for my son. He likes Monstera as much as I do, and he asked if he could have some for his room. So I said, sure, let me make you a plant. I hope you can see me here within the jungle of Monstera that I'm currently dwelling in. But I know when I watch plant videos on YouTube, I like to listen to the speaker, but I also like to look at all the foliage that surrounds them. So I hope you enjoy the view. So a couple basic facts about Monstera. They are native to the southern rainforests of Mexico. They are also considered mildly invasive in Hawaii. I thought that was an interesting fact. I found that on Wikipedia as I was researching today. They grow up things. So if you see them by a building, they could grow up the building. They, in their native habitat, grow up trees. They become this big, huge um, plant. And what it does is it sends out aerial roots, which I can show you a little bit later. But what they do is they send out these real long aerial roots and they will attach themselves to the tree. And they'll use that to climb up to the canopy. And as they get larger and bigger, the leaves get more fenestrations in them, which is just beautiful. And it's what all of us look for in the houseplant world. We want these big, huge, lush monsteras with fenestrations in them. 
uh, in the household setting, it would be hard to get a monster beyond six to eight feet tall. But that being said, we could still get fenestrations within our leaves if we give them the proper climate and we give them the proper soil and the proper light that they need. If we meet those requirements, there's no reason that our monstera can't be very happy and live a very long time. A big part of the reason that monstera do so well in household conditions is they crave the same environment that we do. They like their temperatures to be between 68 and 86 degrees. Humidity is also okay. Typical household humidity, which ranges anywhere from 35 to 55 percent, is ideal for the monstera. They don't need to have 75 to 80 percent humidity, which we struggle to recreate within our homes. We chase it with humidifiers, pebble trays, misting the leaves. You don't have to go through any of that with the monstera, which is another reason why it's such a coveted plant and it does so well within our homes. The only thing that a monstera really desires is excellent well-draining soil, which we'll cover that a little more thoroughly here in a minute, as well as good, bright, indirect light. You don't want to have direct sunlight because what that will do is burn your leaves. And the last thing you want to do is give your prized monstera sunburn. You don't want that to happen. But as long as you put it in a nice west-facing window, or perhaps in a southern facing window and you pull it back a few feet so that it's not getting burnt, your monstera will do just fine. It's such an easy plant to take care of. As far as soil goes, because monstera are considered an aeroid, what they desire is a good, well-draining, light, chunky mix. What that means for us is that we should do probably 30% orchid bark. We should do maybe 10 to 15 percent potting soil. We could throw in earthworm castings, which I highly recommend. I use that to fertilize all my plants when I repot them. Um, we could also throw in a little bit of perlite, maybe some activated charcoal if you have that on hand. Anything that helps to maintain that light fluffy soil. It's also the same mix that I pretty much use for all of my Hoyas. I really like something that does not retain moisture. So the more chunky elements that you can get into your soil, the happier your Monstera will be. As far as watering is concerned, I only really water mine when it's completely dry. I'm talking one or two days after it's completely dry. I let the soil dry out completely and then I give it a really nice soak within the sink. I also will take the time while I water it and I'll just wash down the leaves, I'll get a paper towel, I'll clean the leaves off. Because the leaves are so large, it's important that you keep them dust free. So every time I water them, which is seven to 10 days in within my home atmosphere, I also just take a minute and I wipe down all the leaves and give them a nice good shower, just like they would experience as if they were in the rainforest. That's what you're trying to achieve. As far as pots or planters are concerned, as long as you have excellent drainage holes, you can really put it into whatever you would like. I have this guy sitting over here to my left in a terracotta pot, but let me tell you, that's about the biggest pot that I'll do. I struggle to carry that one back and forth from the sink, especially when he's watered. The big boy sitting here beside me, he's actually in a nursery pot. And that's good because I need the lightweight pot in order to be able to move him around. Also, a perk to this, he'll be in here for probably another year or two until he becomes root-bound. When he is root-bound, if the time comes where I actually have to physically cut this pot off or break the pot, knowing that it's in plastic will make cutting the pot much easier in order to be able to free the plant to get it into a larger container. Again, the most important thing when it comes to choosing your planter for your Monstera is making sure that it has drainage holes. They hate to sit in wet, soggy soil. Make sure you're not doing that. It's the best way to kill your plant. As for fertilizer, I don't really fertilize any of the plants within my house. Fall, spring, summer, they've grown excellent. I've seen really no reason to fertilize. The only reason I would fertilize, and I actually did on my philodendron Brazil, was because the leaves looked rather yellow and they looked like they were not lacking nutrients. 
So what it did was I gave them an all-purpose fertilizer. You can do that with any of these guys. It would be fine. I would just tell you dilute it by half, so use only half the recommended dose, and only do it maybe once a month. You don't need to do it more often than that. Once a month for the Monstera in my house would translate to approximately every other watering. There's really no reason to fertilize more than that. If you so the last topic that I want to cover is propagation. Honestly, Monstera has probably been the easiest plant to propagate within my collection. It is so simple. Back to those aerial roots that we discussed. So you'll notice on your plant that your Monstera will send aerial roots down. And what those aerial roots are looking to do is attach to either a tree or a moss pool or some sort of structure that I continue to climb up. Um, and the best place to cut your monstera in order to propagate it is right below one of those aerial roots. I can show you here two that I have in water. They look like this. And if you can see all those roots in there, I tell you what, I'll get closer and I'll pull one out so you can see it. My camera is having a hard time focusing because there's so much background noise. So the brown roots that you see here are actually the aerial roots that already existed. The white roots that you see are what we've grown in the water since we've had it in there. I've had it in the water approximately three weeks now. And to be honest with you, this cutting would be ready to go into soil today. But I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna give it one more week and then I'm going to pot it up for my son for his collection. Here's a close-up of the plant in the terracotta pot. You can see the aerial roots growing in the foreground and also in the background. Can you see this little node right here? That would be an excellent cutting to take. That is where the new roots will form and you will have excellent success. If I cut above it, say right here, I would just kill the leaf that is above it. It needs this aerial root in the water in order to be able to establish new roots. So when you take cuttings from your Monstera, make sure that you are getting beneath that node because that is what will cause new roots to grow. In my opinion, the trickiest part about propagating anything from water is making that transition from water to soil. Now, it's a catch-22 because you have to keep your soil a little more moist in order for the roots to continue to take the way they were in your soil. If you potted that up and you let your soil dry out immediately the way we recommend for an established Monstera, you unfortunately will kill the cutting that you just took. So you have to just kind of be on your game and make sure that you water it every couple days, at least make sure that you're looking at it every couple days to make sure that your cutting is taking. I hope you learned something new in today's video. Thanks for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed my video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or you have any comments, please make sure that you leave them in the comments section. I would love to hear from you. Thank you and have a good evening.